I'm Joe, and I'm going to tell you with... Taylor. Hi, I'm back here. There's Taylor. We're back. We're from a long hiatus of one week. Yes. Here we are, filming again. I've got a new t-shirt on, because we wear the same shirts for weeks in a row. Three weeks, exactly. Yes. Three weeks, exactly. And we also have a new makeup artist uh, that was helping us today with covering up blemishes. We won't tell you where those blemishes are. You'll just have to find out because they're that good. Zoom in. You'll find them. Yeah, exactly. You'll find them over there. <laughs> but, Taylor, what are we talking about today? We are, uh, we were given a, a question that we were going to cover a two-part. One here on Joe Tells You, one we're going to cover also on We Tell You. will kind of tie in there. But on um, this week's Joe Tells You, we're talking about the good old chump care that happened. And uh, at the time of recording, people are arise about this. And... There's People, riots in the streets. Pretty There's much. Places burning down. Streets and fires burning down. AKA Facebook is blowing up with people and their opinions. And Berkeley's they- burning. Everything's going crazy right now. So the biggest problem is since this election's been going on, you hear a lot of crazy, wild stories about costs, taxes, finance, all that other stuff, right? The problem is, is a lot of it's just not true, or they're picking out little parts of it little snippets of it to make their case for why this person's version's better, that person's version's better. We're just going to try to tell you how it affects you specifically. So regular people, regular jobs, regular incomes, what you're going to see, what changes you're going to see in your taxes and your finances by these different laws being passed. Right, Taylor? I had told so. Joe, <laughs> tell us. And we don't normally do political stuff, but this is our season of Trump because we're getting in on the views bandwagon. This is pretty much sweeps for us. Yeah, this, this, sweeps. Is, this is sweeps. If you mention Trump's name, uh, your ratings double in size, right? Everyone knows this. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah, so we're going to go and we're going to talk about Trump Care, the Affordable Care Act, how it affects you. Does anyone know what the Affordable Care Act is, Taylor? We don't have an audience, Joe. Oh, yeah. Just me. We do. Just Taylor. But no, I don't. Please tell me. Okay. Well, it's just mandated health care for everyone, right? We all know this, right? There's end of video. Yeah, end of video. People were uninsured. People apparently were dying in the streets. People were just uh, couldn't afford health care. I like the old system of piling up your bills and then filing bankruptcy and then ignoring them. Why did we have to go? Why did we have to go with this whole the better new, days new system, right? Or like when you would go to the doctor and you would pile up medical bills, and then they would call you and say you're going to pay these, and you'd say no, and they'd negotiate a price with you. Remember those days? You ever had that happen to you, Taylor? No, I've always had insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like everyone else who didn't have insurance, Sorry. and I waited to the billing department of the hospital to collect you. And they're bad negotiators. <laughs> they're really bad at it. They would call you and be like, "Well, what can you afford?" I'd be like, "I don't know, like none of it." And they'd be like, okay, how about you pay like 100 bucks or 50 bucks?" I'd be like, sure, it sounds good to me. And that was the old system I lived by for years. And the previous system I had before that was called welfare <laughs> and disability. It was called, it was called Medi-Cal. If you're poor in California, you have Medi-Cal, which is like, you know, a hip little name, Medi-Cal, you know, yeah. like Medicare, right? But I didn't even, I didn't know you had to pay for health insurance. I, I didn't. I, I had no idea. Like when I was younger, like we'd go to the doctor. And I, we would just go in and out, and that was the doctor visit, and that was the end of that story. Like when I said I wanted health, like I was at my job and I was ten ninety nine, right? It was at our our company I worked with with you, right? Yeah, I was ten ninety nine, and I said, well, I want to be under the regular plan, and I want to get taxes and insurance and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, well, let me go ahead and sign up for the company health plan, right? And then it was like. At the time, it was like three hundred or four hundred bucks per paycheck or something like that before taxes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what's what's all this? Like, what is all this then, right? And this is 2008. Like, I should have known at the time, like what healthcare was. But remember, gr- when you're growing up like me in like poverty, you have no idea what it is. Like, you you really don't know. And when I say poverty, like in case you didn't catch the earlier shows, like literally, when we talk about like welfare and stuff like that. Yes, I did. I grew up like that. I grew up on HUD housing, the whole thing, the whole the whole enchilada. Like, I would go to people like Taylor's house to eat. Right? Yeah, refer back to our first video we put up ever. Yes, exactly. So that's what we would do, right? So I didn't know what it was. So when I was getting these, like, WAP, I was like, health, I was like, why is this bill, like, $600 a month? I don't understand. Like, I, 
it, I'm healthy. I don't need insurance. Why, why is it so much money? I thought like it'd be like car insurance, like 130 bucks a month or whatever it was like yeah. at the time. And you'd be fine. Like what were you paying for health insurance? Honestly, I don't know. I picked up a plan that had my doctor I knew in it and took that one. I really didn't see. I guess I was just that privileged people who just like said, oh, take the money. It's okay. Whatever. Yeah. Even though I made a lot less than you did, I acted like I made a lot more. We discussed this before on the show. You had white privilege and I was like, oh, geez, a, yeah. I was a poor Hispanic family. <laughs> like we've discussed this before on the show in yes. depth. We we had switcheroo lives over here. Yeah. So um, do you know how much you pay for health insurance a year before the Affordable Care Act took place or what about after? No, I, I'm sure I can pull up a paycheck right now and see how much I pay right now, but I'm not sure. I really didn't see it. I, I know that my job had looked like it had pretty low. I, I'm, I'm currently under HMO right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I looked like it had pretty low, uh, removal from my paycheck. You know, they, they took out not so, so much. So you like most Americans have no idea what you're paying before and after the, the care act, but you're hopping mad about it. This is very <laughs> true. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. All right. I'm mad too. That's good. Yeah. I went from paying zero to paying something. Yes. So that, uh, terrible for me, but so let's talk about the points of contention in what this is. Okay. So basically there are a lot of people that were uninsured. I had no idea. You had no idea. Let's be honest people. I still don't. We, we don't just be, we, we have no idea. Like basically, you know, uh, people that are older have some type of insurance, you know, people that work have some type of insurance and you know, people that don't have insurance, um, have a lot of medical bills, right? So from me, from a finance perspective and money perspective, people were filing bankruptcy over medical bills, things like that, which to me was a great system because you have to pay anything. But now, now what do you, what do you have to do? You have to pay, you have to actually pay something. If you, if you, there's a mandate, right? Right now. And if you don't have health insurance, you pay for health insurance in your taxes. And it says that everyone has to have health insurance or you pay a penalty for not having that insurance. So, most people, when this came out, were like me, saw the bills for health insurance and then said, well, what's the penalty? It's like 600 bucks. I go, oh, yeah, I'm totally taking the penalty. What's the point of paying for health insurance? Because it was like 600 bucks for like the penalty and then like 600 bucks a month for health insurance. I'm like, well, that's a no-brainer. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and take the penalty, right? Was that penalty per year? Yes, yeah, per year under taxes. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get it on that? <laughs> Did you want to sign up for that on your, on your taxes? Maybe. Yeah. So like – for most people, like, here's like, let's be real for the logic behind this, right? For most people, the the points of contention was like the pre existing condi- condition thing, right? If you have pre existing condition, you can't get health care or you get it for a certain rate, right? So if you had cancer or things like that, you would sign up for health care and they can deny you because you had a pre existing condition. So when the Affordable Care Act came out and insurers can't deny you for a pre existing con- condition, that just makes you. I mean, let's be honest, right? If you don't have health insurance and you pay a six hundred dollar whatever penalty, or I think it's four to six hundred dollars per year penalty, right? Or so you could pay that, right? And then if you have something happen to you, you can go, "Hey, gotta take care of me now because I'm at the hospital and this broken skull and everything is a pre-existing condition." But you guys got to do it. So the trade-off, like four hundred, six hundred bucks a year, mm-hmm. and then going and walking to the hospital. Sounds great to me as a guy who doesn't get sick or, well, I guess I do get sick, but I take, I take internet pills, which, (laughs) which has been my healthcare for a long time. And then, um, as opposed to a guy like Taylor, which was paying it per month and, you know, get basically what'd you, what'd you do? What'd you get out? Well, uh, you're a bad story because you've actually had crap happen to you. I we've I we've established that I'm a bad story on many <laughs> on many examples. For me. I'm a you, bad did, example did you, in general. Okay, you had your uh, gallbladder removed. gallbladder removed, and you had like gall stones of some kind, right? Well, Was this yeah. prior to ACA Affordable Care Affordable Care Act Obamacare for those? Oh, uh, this was I'm a, I, no, it was before ACA. Okay, so before it, yeah. you want me to call it Obamacare so it's easier. I, I'm for sure. Why not? Okay, so it was prior to ACA, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you know how much it was for your for you to pay, and how much your insurance paid? Did you ever get a bill in the mail and it said something? Uh, no, it was fully covered. Okay. Did you ever like see something though, like in the mail for how much they paid or what was covered and something like that? You never saw any type of information on the hospital stay, something like that. They, they may have sent to me, but I, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. You've been in the hospital recently for something, right? No, I don't believe I have. 
I thought you were just in the hospital for something. Or no, so you, no, I went, sick. To, I went for a, a checkup. Oh, okay, yeah, checkup, whatever. My hernia. Have you noticed anything different about healthcare since? Have you noticed like price change or like something the treatment was different or things like that? No, not at all. So nothing happened to Taylor. So no, it's, it's a bad example. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me, please. He's got a great. I can't help you. It, okay, so okay, so I got a perfect life. This is one of those stories where like somebody says like. I'm not racist because I know black people, right? Yeah. So we are care about or don't care about or care about health insurance because no one we know is affected, right? By this. Yeah. Do you know anyone who's affected by uh Affordable Care Act besides me paying the four hundred dollars? Do you know um, anyone who's affected by this? Uh, I know my wife has has goes um I know my wife has insurance, but not through a job. She does it just out of pocket. Okay. But she pays a huge amount. What's the year. amount? Do you uh, know? I, I don't know. But it's, it's, okay. a, it's a huge amount. All right. So those are all personal stories. I'm, I'm doing this one a little longer this time because this one needs actual some in-depth coverage on it because we're going to get a lot of uh, hits based upon saying Trump. Yeah. So I don't want to get any of these things wrong. But um, if you don't know by now where me and Taylor stand politically, we don't vote. So basically – we just talk about politics and then leave that to the, the experts uh, out there. Um, or, I mean, if we do vote, it would, I mean, I voted for Gary Johnson last time, but this time he seemed more crazy. I, I, don't, want, I don't want Jerry Simmons. I don't want to vote. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, whatever. If you guys want to yell about Gary Johnson, I don't care either. I don't care at all. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Like, here's the thing. If you voted for Hillary, I'm glad Trump won. If you voted for Trump, I'm, uh, or if you voted for Trump or whatever, I'm glad that he's making you angry now. I mean, whatever, just who cares? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. But Jimmy Kimmel the other day, um, talked about his kid having open heart, heart, heart surgery, disease. right? Heart surgery, right? Yeah. So everyone uses this as an example of, uh, preexisting conditions and affordable care act, right? Okay. That is not at all what happened with Jimmy Kimmel and his child. The other thing is too, is you saw Chrissy tweet. Chrissy Teigen's tweet the other day. I didn't see that one. Uh, her having anxiety and ha- asking Trump to pay for her medication because she has anxiety. And she said she was grinding her teeth and she had to have part of her teeth shaved down so she doesn't bite her lip or her tongue. And then she was saying that she has to double up her anxiety medication because she's been on constant anxiety ever since Trump got elected, things like that. Wow. It it doesn't like, – like I know everyone wants to talk about people being on their side because, you know, we're bashing Trump or this or that, whatever, right? It doesn't help when the people bashing Trump are multi, multi, multi millionaires. Married to multi millionaires. Ma- and married to multi millionaires, right? Yes. Jimmy Kimmel is worth more than $100 million. Okay. And whether we need to talk about like that or not, these aren't the people that understand what you're going through. We are. Me and not Taylor. To, not to say well, that what happened to this child is, is, a, is good or anything. No not to say that. I'm just saying that in his situation, uh, here's the problem with Jimmy Kimmel situation. The hospital that treated Jimmy Kimmel's baby was actually a private charity hospital that nothing to do with <laughs> the affordable care act. Design, right? that, that's a, uh, it was a specialty hospital that deals with children and children care. And the surgeon that got paid to do it was one of the best heart surgeons in the world for infants. Yeah. Like he specialized in that. Right. Mm-hmm. So that I get that he's trying to empathize with you. And he, we're talking about him working, his doctor working on that procedure for his child. And you're thinking like, yes, pre-existing conditions. And that could have been me. No, it couldn't have, because that's not the doctor that'd probably be working on you or your kid, because that's the one that's at the private charity hospital for people that could afford the assurance. So although that's a sad story and things like that, uh, my cousin actually was going through the same thing. My cousin, her son has a heart condition, things like yeah. that. And so did I read a lot. Yeah, whatever. I was reading uh, Ben Shapiro, and he was saying that his son had also went through the same thing. His doctor had that performed for him as well. Ben Shapiro um, has money as well. Uh, I know that doctor wasn't the doctor that was working on my cousin's kids. So that's because they have regular health insurance, not multimillionaire health insurance. So the, the Children's Hospital LA is a private charitable hospital with $233 million budget. So... That's not Affordable Care Act. That's also not Trump Care. <laughs> and when you're talking about how sad Jimmy Kimmel is and things like that, 
That's because they can afford to pay for that. Um, the next thing is, um, prior to Obamacare going into place and people having pre-existing conditions, do you know if anyone was dying in the streets of pre-existing conditions or were they just getting built? Now, mind you, getting built and having to file bankruptcy, stuff like that, yes. Very crippling. I understand, right? But if you have a lot of medical bills and things like that that are piling up on you, hey, if you're dying anyways, you don't have to pay them. Hey. Hey, hey, whatever. Or get out of it. I mean, that's the way it is. Sorry to those out there who are dying. Have to hey, here's the thing. If I was going through that and I had all these bills pile up, I'd be like, you know, someone's going to have to deal with this, but not me. So I'm going to go with that. I know. We're, we're jerks. This is what we... No, this no. Is, that's, <laughs> what that's, we get. that's what... Uh was told a couple there were a couple stories online where the doctor said like yeah go ahead and just take it take your vacation take rent your credit card run, run your credit card bills up much as you want and then just pass because uh, as far as uh, people don't understand the debt does not pass to your children the debt is your responsibility the debt goes so if you're convinced that you're going to lose your house or you're going to do this that whatever no actually <laughs> you could just file bankruptcy and take, have that take all it, take it all, to all out of your name yeah, take it all your name, file bankruptcy, give the house to your kids while you're sick, and then uh, you pass on, and the bill collectors call, they have no legal standing. So that's why you tune into this show, is if you have those medical bills, we'll tell you to get out of it. And before you die. <laughs> and that's a legitimate reason, because if you're actually sick and you have terminal illness, that's as good a reason of any to file bankruptcy and get out of those debts. We are such jerks. This is going to be the episode where this, they're mad about it. Okay, so anyways... So were people dying in the streets? Ben Shapiro always argues that people weren't dying in the streets. Were they? I don't know. Did you? Were people dying in the streets? Or were they dying in the hospitals? Not that I saw in the streets. Hospitals maybe because people always die in the hospitals. But I'm well, I guess they were dying in the hospitals. So pre-existing condition. So the next thing was that this is a mandate. People. Hillary Clinton famously said that people can't afford a mandate. That's why we're having the problem that we are. And then uh, they all agreed on doing a mandate. Um. Kimmel also did not provide a single example of a baby getting denied health care for a pre-existing condition. That's another problem, too, is that usually in those cases, the baby or the people that have those illnesses aren't denied because of that. You still have to treat people that are suffering from different conditions. I'd like to have specific examples. I don't like when people write an article and they find the one example of this guy in this situation, over here, had a situation happen to him. If you have the situation happen to you, we'd like to hear about it happening to you or someone you know personally be affected by this because I'd like to know the differences of what happened to Trump Care or, or Obamacare, whatever they're calling it nowadays. Yeah. I'd like to know what happened specifically in that situation because as far as everyday people like us, Taylor, yes. your wife, yes. their family members, our family members – as far as all this stuff going on, all this has affected everyday regular people is it's raised premiums and no one's using it yet. And that's the biggest problem with it, right? Is because the people that are essentially paying for the healthcare, if you're not using it, are younger people, millennials, people in their 30s, whatever, that don't have problems with their healthcare. They're essentially paying for people that do have problems with their healthcare. That's the biggest problem right now is because we have a bunch of people retiring, turning into their you know, fifties and sixties and of retirement age, baby boomers. We actually have more people that are going to be on the healthcare system than are actually paying into the healthcare system. So we're going to be fronting the bill for those people. And you know why we're fronting the bill? Why Joe? Those people vote. We don't. So So they voted. (laughs) Those people voted for people to give them things like healthcare and things like that, because they don't want to see their premiums affected. Yeah. We're complaining that we have to pay for health care, but vote. we didn't vote. That's the problem besides that. So what are the differences? Taylor, what are the differences? That we didn't vote? I don't know. I have the notes in front of me on well, the differences. Joe tells you not. Joe tells you Taylor. So um, the basics of Trump care and the difference, right? Okay. This is uh, – it's funny. This is Obamacarefacts.com. And they have a misspelling. This is, should I trust this website? Because it says the basics of Trump care, the difference, and it says the basics of Trump care. If you're comparing something, you would want to put the basics of Obamacare than the basics of Trump care, okay? Okay, so 
Okay, individual mana. Okay, here's the individual mana. This is... Well prepared. This is... We are. This is a... This is a horrible... Okay. <clears throat> Large businesses don't have to provide insurance to full-time workers. Large businesses do have to provide insurance to full-time workers. I'm assuming that that would be an Obamacare <laughs> one, even though it says... Trump. Okay, let's see. Here we go. So I think the right side <laughs> is Obamacare. The left side is Trump care. So individual mandate. There is a fee if you don't maintain coverage or an exemption for each month for those who can afford it. So the individual mandate would be if you fall into the mandate category on your taxes, you would pay a mandate. Now with the Trump care, there is no individual mandate for the requirement to get a coverage or pay fee. Instead, there is a 30% charge for 12 months. If you have a gap of coverage for more than 63 days and re-enter the market. So with Trump care, there's no mandate, but you're going to pay a premium if you decide to get insurance or re-enter the health coverage market. Does that answer your question, Taylor? Sure. Never um, had the I, question. I, 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 this was for our number one viewer, Dre, who yes. wanted to know what the differences yeah, were. Know what the, Trump care. We're going over the differences of it. Yeah. Uh, large businesses don't have to provide for the insurance full time. Under Obamacare, they did have to provide for it. So that was 50 employees or more you had to provide. Healthcare for full time employees. Yeah. So what they would do is just cut the hours of the full time employees to go under the, the part time. So, no one with pre existing conditions can be denied coverage. Um, pre existing condi- conditions are covered. We already know this for Obamacare. Don't we know this? Pre existing conditions you can't be denied, right? Yeah. Trump Care. Pre existing conditions are covered, but state based waivers can be used to exclude certain conditions from life. Time annual limits can be used to charge sick people more. So basically, um, they do have pre-existing conditions. You can't be denied, but you can be charged more for it. So does it really say? Is, is there the legal? Is the actual text say charge sick people more, or is that their? Is Great that, question. Is that their Great question, Dre yeah. <laughs> Taylor? This isn't a law yet. So this is what's being discussed. So it passed in the House, right? Yeah, and it needs to be. Uh, it needs to go to the Senate and the Senate is going to come up with their own revisions. And if they change parts of it, it's going to go get kicked back to the house to pass again and then get passed by the Senate and then go to the president. And then they all have to kind of agree on it where the president can veto it if he doesn't like what comes back to him. Yeah. So this is still a long ways away. These are just basically the differences and what they a, are. A two week process. So this is the thing is that, None of this is an actual law. So right now, the law is Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. That's the law. That's the actual law, right? Yeah. Trump Care is not a law. It is an idea, <laughs> basically. So yeah. everyone's getting mad and being kicked around with different ideas. But the biggest problem is the pre-existing condition mandate is the biggest problem with these bills is because what they're arguing about is that's going to th- be a thing that costs the most amount of money, Right. Mm-hmm. Essentially, you're not. People aren't going to like this analogy. Tell me. It would be like getting in a car accident and then buying insurance, right? Okay. The whole point of having insurance is that you're buying into the system in case you get in a car accident, right? That would be what that is. Yeah. So it would be the same if you get in an accident and you go, geez, my car's not covered. I better cover this car. That would be the same as that. If we did insurance like that, right? Our insurance premiums would skyrocket because that would mean anyone at any time could claim insurance benefits by and get into an accident. So we don't do that with car insurance. We don't do that with property insurance. We don't do that with homeowners insurance, things like that, right? Yeah. But we're doing that with health insurance. Okay. I understand you feel bad. I understand that grandmama didn't have insurance and she needs her insurance. I get it. We understand that. We understand the argument, right? I'm just saying financially, it's hard to do that without the premiums going up. But Trump said the premiums would go down. A lot of people don't know how he's going to do that if they're going to go down yet keep the pre-existing conditions clause in the in the new Trump Care Act, right? The next one was essential health benefits. States can waive essential health benefits and therefore reinstate annual and lifetime limits. And in 
back then with the Obamacare, essential health benefits are covered on all plans with no annual or lifetime limits. And not really affecting anyone at this point. It would affect people that were older and things like that. Cost assistance. So those making between 100% to 400% of the poverty, we're going to talk about that later, right, of the poverty yeah. limits, have access to premium tax credits based on income out-of-pocket assistance offered. Tax credits are based on age for 100% and 600% of the poverty level out-of-pocket assistance is cut. Okay, so basically the poverty limits are different for area. We're going to talk about that. Some are uh, some poverty limits in San Mateo are $105,000 a year between your family. In Orange County, it's what, Taylor? I found out the other day. 80000 So these would be percentages based upon those limits. The next one would be Medicaid expansion funding. See, again, none of this stuff really affects – the thing that affects people our age is like the pre-existing conditions. None of this stuff is going to affect it. So the Medicaid one is Medicaid in Obamacare was expanded to all adults in all states that expand. The federal government pays 90% of the cost. With Trump Care, Medicaid expansion funding is frozen. Block grants might be added later into the bill. The next one, taxes. Obamacare taxes, those, uh, it was, it was number seven. They called it Obamacare. Even at the top, it calls Trump care. Um, <laughs> Obamacarefacts.com, guys. Great site that has a misspelling at the top. Obamacare taxes. I don't even know who runs this site. We don't even know. Mr. Obama. Uh, we were just looking for one that compared the two. Because really, like I was telling Taylor earlier, every time you look up this, there's 10 to 15 opinion sites about why Trump's bad, why Hillary's better, why Hillary's bad, why Trump's better. I just wanted an actual comparison of the differences financially is what we're looking for, right? Taylor's eyes are just glossing over. And the best part is I can't, as I'm explaining this, I can't actually see his eyes because he's behind the camera. But I know they're glossing over because it's so boring. It is. It's so boring. So Obamacare taxes those who profit the most off health care. Okay. Trump care cuts most taxes on the industry. All right. So basically that means that like, I don't understand how they're getting a tax cut, even though eh, whatever, none of this makes sense. Hey, it's a bunch of promises, right? I mean, and half this may just go away, right? It's during <laughs> the revision. Half of it might go away. Yeah. So the reason why Obamacare makes sense is because it is a tax hike to ensure everybody. The reason why Trump care doesn't make sense is because it's going to cut costs for insurance. So he says, right? But what it's going to do is it's going to also insure everybody. Financially, it doesn't make any sense. He's going to insure everybody. You're going to be allowed to have the pre-existing conditions uh, mandate kept in. You're going to have, it's going to cut costs, but the insurance company is also going to cut taxes for them. And somehow the benefits are going to go up more. The whole thing's a mess, basically. So, the the problem with the the Obamacare is like, you know how the pre exist, you know how the premiums went up for everybody. Yes. And everyone's complaining about how they went up and that it's going to get worse and worse. It's not even close to being up to where the 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 premiums are supposed to like go up again in 2018 and again 2020. So none of this Trump did, mind you, none of this he did. These are his ideas for fixing it. None of this looks like a fix. None of this financially makes sense. But all of you people are going to blame Trump for these premiums going up in 2018 and 2020. That's a slick move by Obama to put those things in there, right? To blame it on whoever was the guy after him. Mm -hmm. So he looks like the hero and the person after that gets all the yelling and screaming at. Because Trump's supposed to fix all this stuff, but the tax is going to go. So basically... We're taxed a lot already. The yeah, we're going on thirty minutes. Don't worry, Taylor. We gotta thoroughly cover this okay. for the people. So, um, the taxes are gonna go up. They're gonna go up even more. Healthcare is a mess. Trump care is not gonna solve it. It's not a solution. And what you need to understand from the rest of our shows is you need to cut expenses somewhere else in your life because this isn't gonna solve that. Trump care and Obamacare. They help you if you don't have any money and don't make any money and need health care. Um, state aid or programs or uh, uh, state coverage for people that have low income and, and no money 
you'll have to rely on those systems still. That's not going to go away. And again, the middle class will be affected the worst by this, right? So sick and okay. You can't be charged more for having preexisting conditions or more based on age in Trump care. Um, the sick and elderly can be charged more under Trump care. Older Americans be charged five times more than younger people on its face. Do you like that? Or do you not like that? Taylor? I don't like that. <laughs> I mean, I don't like it either, but that's how they're going to make the more money. Then I guess this is number, this is a, another one in there. So they're going to, Trump's going to try to make up for it by charging people more that use the system more. Okay. That kind of makes sense. Right. You also got to, you lost over some around as well. You said, this is a still need to make money. This is to make money. You, yeah. This, the, the underlying thing is just, this is all to make money. This is still a business. So insurance the, is still a business. So this is where he's making the money. He's charging grandma <laughs> and older people more money for their health insurance. Uh-huh. So that's where I guess he's getting the money for that. Okay. The next one is the afford affordable care act expanded coverage and got rid of high risk pools. Trump care allows for high risk pools to create state funded payer funded reassurance program via state level waivers. So meaning high risk pools, your state would have to cover the gap in that, not federally. Next one, the affordable care act therefore cost 333 billion more and insured 24 million people. So let's go over this real quick. Um, we love calculators on the show, don't we? Yes. It's our favorite over there. We, what I love doing is I love doing calculators right when we're talking in the middle of the show. So, Taylor, what do you think that comes out to? So what do we got? What so, was the, What was the equation? What were we doing? The Affor- Affordable Care Act. We love doing it on the show for you guys right there. Yes. The Affordable Care Act insured 24 million people at a cost of $333 billion more. So basically, for $333 billion in in raising money, they insured just 24 more million people, right? Yes. So we were going to go over that real quick. We got 24 million people. Yeah, that's it. That's right. And that, God, these numbers are so massive. What is our government doing with this money? Six zeros, right, for a million. 33, okay, so 33, 337, so that's million and three more so million. that's billion. So <laughs> yeah. that's a big number. Okay. So that's 333. Taylor, is that right? Is that, is that billions over there? Uh, that is billion, yes. Okay. So that's billion. Okay. So we divide that. It's so like crazy to me. It doesn't seem right. Okay. So 24 million. So we have, that's 24 million right that is correct okay that's right that's correct okay so let's just do the quick math on that so that comes out to um fourteen thousand. so this is per year i believe right oh no this is uh through it's 333 billion over the decade according to the first report of this this the plan prior to that did this by leaving 52 million without coverage by 2026, increases the uninsured by 24 million by 2026 for a total of 52 million. So it comes out to a cost of 14,000 per $14,041.66 per person over the course of a decade. So no, 10 years. so 10 years. So, $14,000 divided by 10 years equals. So it comes out to a $1,400 tax um, per person insured out of the 24 million people that were uninsured. That's what it comes down to. It's a lot of numbers, Joe. It's a lot of numbers over there. So Trump's taking that away. <laughs> that was under the old Obamacare thing. Uh, Trump's saying that way he's supposed to leave 52 million uninsured as opposed. So the uninsured by 24 million. So it's going to be, so right now insured is 24 million more people. Trump wants to take that away, driving it back to the 52 million without health insurance coverage. So how many poor people are in this country? A lot more than a lot more than 54 million yeah. or are they in poverty. 
So none of these are covering anyone is what <laughs> comes down to. And the, those that stand to benefit most in most in the, in the industry are people that benefit from these industries. So the bottom line is the Affordable Care Act reduced the uninsured and bankruptcy and helped keep hospitals full, but people were struggling with cost. For those with assistance, however, Affordable Care Act meant tens of millions had less affordable coverage for the first time. Currently, uninsured rates are at the all-time low. So what are we looking for here? Uninsured rates are at an all-time low at the expense of tens of millions of people that have more expensive coverage. Trump care might bring premium costs down for some, but less assistance and less on health care means hospitals and the sick and poor elderly will see new hurdles while most wealthy, large employers and earners will see tax breaks. I'm about to throw up with all this stuff. What about you, Taylor? I, I'm, I'm just... Trying to get to take it all in. I really am. <laughs> so basically, what it comes down to is the stuff that we pull our strings for with politicians are wealthy business people will see tax breaks, which I mean that makes sense if the business people were paying for the coverage with Obamacare, they're going to see tax breaks now with Trump, and sick elderly will see new hurdles while trying to get covered for health insurance. So basically. Looks like uh, the Affordable Care Act in this situation covered more people but cost the middle class more money. And according to Trump Care, they're saying that the same exact thing. The sick elderly will see new hurdles while business people will get deductions. And none of the middle class has been mentioned for tax breaks on this. So Trump Care might bring premium costs down, but less assistance for the people that were already getting less assistance before the Affordable Care Act went into place. So, so Jar, are we really screwed? I don't think everyone making basically more than minimum wage, nothing's going to change. Is what this is <laughs> is what this means. So you're going to be paying about the same as you were paying, and if you're making a decent living. So making more than six figures or whatever, you might see a tax break. But everyone in between are going to see nothing. And those that are poor and can't afford insurance anyway are going to pay more money. So what's the real problem? Healthcare is out of control of this country. My advice to you as a financial advisor, um, Mexico has great plans, I hear, for getting surgery and things done for cheap. Have you heard that? Yes. Like. I like basically if you go to India or Mexico or like Asia for healthcare, the doctors come here and get their degrees. So they go back there to practice medicine for cheaper. So food for thought. I'm going overseas. Taylor? I'll be here with you. <laughs> is what we've determined by it's doing like these. Nick is a long way over there. So in, in my opinion, um, if, as a financial advisor, if you don't have any money, take the penalty and go get health care when you need it and let suckers like Taylor and his wife pay for it, according to thank <laughs> the, the, Thanks, Taylor. You're welcome. Everyone thank him in the comments later. And uh, people like me, if they're not going to serve me here because I'm going to have to go into bankruptcy to get it, I'm just going to Mexico. That's what I'm doing. Go to Mexico for my people. And we're because you're go. white, you can get back over really easily. Yeah, and because I'm white. Thank you, Trump. The, he, I, I can get in real easily in and out. But here's the thing, though. Like, I was driving by the uh, the mosque today because there's one in State College or whatever. Yeah. I like more like everyone going in and out of those places yeah. than I do <laughs> in American. I might not get back in. Right? From Mexico? No, Mex Mexicans are more Catholic than... That's yeah, true. Yeah. There you go. That's 40 minutes on something that we know nothing about and letting you know that you won't be affected by it either way. So, Taylor? Yes. Nothing's happening to you. Dre, there was your question out there. Are you, do you have health insurance, Dre? I believe he does. How much, Does he make anything? That's a horrible question to ask on camera. Might get a discount, Dre. <laughs> Dre, you might get a discount. Um... 
Taylor, you're screwed. Your wife is screwed. Dre, you might get a discount. As far as the rich that people go for, everyone's concerned about the rich paying for stuff, whatever. You get a tax break. They're getting a tax break. So there you go. Do you have any more questions? That's Trump Care.